of Washington Heights by none other than Bones Malone, who still considered one of the greatest hip-hop journalists uh, of all time. And um, for him to see my writing potential and guide me in the right direction was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I started at the source with one article, and my first assignment was to go over, there was a refrigerator box filled with demos. Uh, and the office had accumulated for months, because at the time, Unsigned Hype was still one of the more popular outlets for an unsigned artist to get showcased. I knew that, especially you know with uh, my ambitions of being an A and R. It was probably probably the best you know the best outlet for me to showcase what I'm capable of finding uh, as an A and R. So I went ahead and went through the entire uh, refrigerator box. Keep in mind this is during the era of the tape, so the uh, refrigerator box was filled to to the top. I went through all of them, and within that box was David Banner. You know, so it goes to show you, there's always that one gold nugget in the pile. The unsigned hype was my main, my main focus outside of a lot of the articles that I was writing on pretty much everybody at the time. And while it was cool to give mics and pick lyrics of the month and things of that sort, unsigned hype was what you know. That was my 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 main focus, and. During my time at Uns during my time with Unsigned Hype, I had uh, discovered a couple of folks that you know did pretty well for themselves, uh, and that right there helped showcase what I'd be able to do as an A and R. Uh, some of the people that I found uh, throughout Unsigned Hype were uh, David Banner, as I mentioned, uh, Last Emperor, if anybody who remembers that, Joel Santana, Cardinal Official was in there, and but most notably Eminem, and uh, that was in 1997. And uh, that right there, no one knew. You know, the talent was there. It was just raw talent. It was like, wow, you know. But, um, you know, that, that right there would lead to what I'm doing today. So I always had a penchant for spotting things early. And um, a and r was just, you know, I'm a music aficionado. I mean, it just made sense. It was the idea of finding new talent and just developing it, you know, from, I had read an article on Puff Daddy, a vibe, it was a Vibe article. Uh, it was really well written, and I had no idea that someone actually got paid to go out and find new acts. And at the time, uh, you know, I come from the Stretch and Bob era, where it's like, you wanna hear the new shit, you wanna hear the new, like, fast and now. And even in working at the magazine, you had to work way in advance. We have to work two months in advance for us to cover something during the due date that the magazine is released. From a writer's standpoint, I had a sense of credibility attached to me, which is great. But even with that, you want to utilize that appropriately. You know, you can't. You, know, you could walk in and say, "I know a bunch of writers, you know, who reviewed and been responsible for breaking artists." But to make that transition and, and translate that into the business side of things is no easy feat. My perspective was definitely something I think that uh, that that helped. Um, even now, when I give constructive criticism, you know, from coming from the album review era, you know, you have to review albums and you've got to keep it to about 300, 350 words, you know, and within that, you have to break down that album to its core as to why you should go out and buy it. And as a writer, it really, really helped me get deep into the. Uh, and to believe it or not, the science of creating music, where it's like, okay, this beat works well, but he's just not doing it any justice. Or even at the time as a writer, I used to always complain when dudes would, they would have these songs about women and over like the hardest beat in the world. And it's like, who are you aiming at with this record? You know, so that's something that, it was a natural transition, so to speak. And it was one that gave me a, a, a nice advantage in what I do for a living now. In 2000, I was given an opportunity to come join uh, Goliath Artists, which is the management company of Paul Rosenberg, and um, I saw that as a great opportunity to learn from, you know, one of the best. And at the time, uh, he had had 
you know, Eminem and the roster, Cypress Hill, Exhibit, and a slew of other folks. And I came on board and started handling producer management, and that, that was very educational. It, coming from the magazine side of things, it's completely different from the business side, you know, so uh, it, it was, you know, it was, it was quite a change, but it was one that the transition was pretty smooth. Only because for, for for as long as I can remember, I always wanted an A &R, So, and here I am. Shady Records was an umbrella company uh, within Goliath Artists. It was, you know, what, what, what they would refer to at the time as a vanity label, something that you give an artist just to keep them happy. But Paul saw bigger visions. Paul saw it being, you know, something that can one day maybe even compete with the Def Jams of the world. And that vision came to fruition once we acquired. You know, we brought in D12, Obi, but most notably 50 Cent. That just really took us to a whole nother level. And it embodies the kind of, the great thing about having those guys on the roster, it set a precedent for the kind of music that we put out. My greatest memory in working at Shady between 2000 and 2005. I think my, uh, my greatest memory and working with Shady during that during that moment is just watching someone's vision unfold. You kind of take it a little bit for granted because you're just day in, day out, just working and doing what you have to do to keep it looking back. That's the one thing I could say that 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 uh, that I've enjoyed the most, you know, between during that period of time. You know, I wish I could sit here and tell you it was the time we were at the club and we were popping bottles and things of that sort, but nah, nah. And looking back, it's just watching two people's visions just come to fruition and just having the honor of working with one of the greatest MCs to ever do it it's just just watching that in itself you know it's just something to look back on with, with a lot of pride